now that I've had the opportunity to test the Intel Ultra 9 285K, the Intel Ultra 7 265K, the AMD 9950X, and then the AMD 9800X 3D. Yes, fully aware that was a mouthful of brand new CPUs with different naming schemes. So let me go over Intel first, just because I want to explain where I am coming from with my opinion and advice on which CPU, which motherboard, and all this kind of stuff to get for this generation. Real quick, just wanted to say that if you would like a PC from me, my Facebook business page is linked down in the description below. I do not charge you anything other than the cost of parts, which I do in fact give you a full list of everything with the final cost before I order it all with my own money. You do not pay me anything until you see the video, the performance, the benchmarks, and all of that kind of stuff. So again, link down in the description below. I am coming from a productivity, content creation, photo editing, artificial intelligence, and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm coming from that perspective, okay? Because at least for me, when I have a computer that's already capable of getting 300 FPS inside of games, I really don't care about getting 30 more FPS when I'm already getting 300 FPS. There's no denying this generation of CPUs, the Ultra series, and then the AMD 9000 series, Go AMD if you care about gaming. The 9800X 3D is going to be the best gaming CPU for a very long time. That is leaps and bounds ahead of every other CPU out here. And I'm talking like leaps and bounds. We're talking like the highest end Intel CPU getting 300 FPS. The 9800X 3D is getting like 400 FPS. Like there is a massive jump in performance however the 9800x 3d is not good for productivity that is just a fact okay i built and kept this computer over the 9950x computer that pretty much had the exact same specs inside of it okay and the only difference in that 9950x build was the 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 motherboard That's kind of it, actually, to be honest. It's, that's pretty much all the only differences that was in that computer. So this over here, this is an Ultra 285K. That over there is going over to the customer that bought the computer and who I built it for and the benchmarks and all that kind of stuff that you're seeing on screen. So in this computer over here, we use the ASRock X8. The different naming schemes are really getting confusing and, and frustrating. So the, the Z890, because <laughs> I've been getting, I've, I honestly have, like before, the 98 before the 9000 series dude is like pretty much every single computer that i was building was intel you know <laughs> and then when the when the 7800x 3d came out i started doing more amd builds and then now it's like it's like kind of on an even playing field like there's all so it's like i'm getting these naming schemes so either way we got the z890 motherboard from asrock specifically got that because it is a lower end motherboard and i wanted to test something with the highest end motherboard and then compare it to something with a lower end motherboard and yes i did take the 285k out of this computer put it in this computer so that we could get a mix and match of the 265k in this computer tested with the 285k and then the same thing over here that way we get like a, a mid-range computer benchmark and testing and then a higher end computer benchmark and testing so that is the motherboard that we got. It is not a bad motherboard by any means whatsoever. The RGB, the polychroma from um, ASRock, I've never been able to even like find or figure out how to download that program in order to change the RGB. So what I end up doing is there's an RGB, I, f I forget the, the name of it. It's like an RGB application where it, it like literally controls any motherboard. I can install it on ASUS's, MSI's and all of that kind of stuff. So then the memory that we got inside of this computer is the same RAM that I get pretty much all the time. The only difference is that I get different speeds because different motherboards support different speeds. If you have a very high-end Z890 motherboard from ASUS, you're going to be able to get the maximum speed RAM. Whereas if you get a lower-end motherboard from ASRock, you're going to be able to, like, whatever. You're going to lose, like, 800 megahertz in your RAM if you really care about 800 megahertz. I'm just being honest, man, okay? So the graphics card that we use in this is the MSI RTX 4070 Ti Super. This is the 4070, the 4070 Ti, the 4070 Super, the 4070 Ti Super. That's really my favorite, 
I don't want to say it's my favorite because obviously the 4090 and 4080 are going to be better. But it's it. I feel like that's the best bang for your buck graphics card if you're getting a computer for all around general use. Okay, so the Ultra 7 and the Ultra 9, they are superior for video editing. And listen, dude, I don't. I had the ability to choose between the 9950X. I had the ability to choose between the 9800X 3D and then the new Ultra Series CPUs. And like, if it's not obvious, like you, you're seeing the computer builds on screen, man. Like I had the ability to choose which one that I wanted to choose. Okay, and I kept the Ultra 9 285K for a reason. Like there's a reason that I kept that. And I, I'm fully aware that different motherboards right now are going to have different issues and different problems because it is a new platform. And just like video games now, where we have a video game that needs 700 updates before it's playable, I get that. Different computers are going to run performance in different areas differently. Man, that was a mouthful right there. So actually, let me just quickly finish up the parts that we used inside of this computer. We got an Antec C5 computer. And just so we're clear, let, just, let me just make this clear. Yes, the fans are in fact mounted properly when you get the case. You don't have to flip them around so that the airflow is pushing through. Like a lot of cases are doing this now. Like Be Quiet's Light Base 600 same thing over here they got fans that are blowing air in on the beautiful side where you don't have to flip the fan over and look at the ugly wires that the, the fans have okay <laughs> and be quiet also did the same thing as antec where they they it's a completely different fan on the back of the case that's pushing air out and then on the bottom it is taking air in you can even go over to the antec website to see the website your or to see the case yourself it is taking air in properly so <laughs> it's just very frustrating when i get caught oh the fans aren't installed properly it's almost like i didn't build the computer and check first <laughs> but anyways so the the last thing uh so i did get a game max i don't have the box anymore it's an 850 watt power supply um I mean, the warranty on that thing is crazy. So, that, I mean, that's kind, of, that's kind of proof to me that the company stands by their product. Um, but it is the first time that I've ever used that GPU or power supply. And the reason that I got that is because it's similar to the Lee and Lee power supply. It actually has nice cables. With that said, the downside to that one over the Lee and Lee power supply is that the Lee and Lee power supply actually comes with the brackets so that your cables look nice, so that they're like, they're like nice and even. Whereas the Game Max one, it just comes with nice looking white cables. And they're kind of all miscombobulated, if that makes any sense. I just made up a word for you, miscombobulated. Um, but it, they don't look bad, you know what I mean? But it would be nice if they had like the little brackets. And then we got just a, a one terabyte NVMe from Kingston, I'm pretty sure is the, the NVMe that we got for it. And anyways, so point being here, now that we, we, we went over pretty much everything, I want you to remember that this is coming from a productivity and and just general use perspective, okay? Because I genuinely just don't understand why everybody bases their reviews off of video games. I just, does this, am I the only one that notices how crazy this is to care about this? When you have a computer capable of 300 FPS, 300 FPS, 300, 300 are you really going to care about even if you, you get the 9800X 3D and boost that into 400? Dude, you're already getting 300 FPS. Do you really even care about getting 400 FPS? <laughs> Do you even have a monitor capable of that? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just being real with you, bro. Like, I'm just like, so I don't care about that. I just don't care about it, okay? I care about the productivity stuff and that sort of stuff in that nature. It... I don't know. I don't know what it is. Okay. I don't, I don't know if there's like partnerships between Adobe, Cyberlink, PowerDirector, DaVinci, Camtasia, and all these other video editors out there, dude. I don't know if there's some sort of a partnership between them where they're working together with Intel, because from what I see, every time I go to edit content, I am by no means saying that the 9950X is bad for content creation. I am by no means saying that the 9950X isn't going to be good for you if you're into content creation. And I am by no means saying that the 9800X 3D is not a, to be honest, I prefer the 9800X 3D over the Intel Ultra 7 
265k but if you're getting into the higher end like ultra 9 versus ryzen 9 i do think intel is still a better platform and this is with the new bios and the new motherboard and a new platform my motherboard i specifically got the highest end motherboard for a reason and it was to the benchmarks for these cpus are all over the place and i'm sure you have all noticed this as well i'm sure you go to gamers nexus and he makes this review and it's it's like it's terrible and then you go over to jay's two cents or linus or bitwit or paul's hardware or somebody else and it's like it's it's like it's like really good and then you go over to this guy and it's like oh it's terrible again and then you come over here and oh it's really good and it's like what so like what is what like why are we like running into all these like mismatches in differences and whatever dude and i really do i genuinely feel be, it's because it's a new platform and people are getting either a gigabyte motherboard an asus motherboard an asrock motherboard an msi motherboard etc and because they're getting different motherboards with different bioses and different layouts and different features and things running at different speeds and this being here and that being over there and this guy having this power supply and this guy matching this ram with this nvme i'm i'm guessing that that's why the performance is so random and so different with a new platform but that computer over there is top it is the highest end computer that you can possibly build everything inside of that except for the graphics card it has a 4080 super in it I, i'm not caving into the 4090 stuff i, I just genuinely don't care okay <laughs> I'm not paying three times MSRP for a 4090 right now. And the, all the white 4090s, they're three times MSRP. And I'm not putting a black graphics card inside of a white computer. It doesn't look good to me. I don't think it looks good. Okay, so I just got the 4080 because I, to be honest, I care a lot more about aesthetics than I do performance. There's a reason that I have four sticks of DDR5, which is in fact running at 8,000 megahertz on this motherboard with the new BIOS update. I did update the BIOS as of 1122 november november 22nd 2025 today it is december 6 2024 <laughs> i'm preparing for the new year so <laughs> so i updated my bios in november of 2024 and it is december 6 2024 right now and as of the whatever the, the bios update from then to now i have not run into any problem problems with my computer other than my camera which is what i'm recording with right now and i don't know if that was a usb problem or if it was my elgato cam link having a problem or the usb cable having a problem but with that said the computer before this with the 9950x did not run into this issue and then the 14900k before the 9950x also did not or that one i did have an issue again kind of updated the bios and stuff and uh, whatever. I don't know if it's like a Windows or USB or motherboard or CPU or whatever type of problem. But either way, my point in explaining this is my camera would like lose power. Screen would go black for a second. And uh, then it would come back on in a couple of seconds. And then the second thing is when I, uh, in the old BIOS with this motherboard, with the RAM running at 8,000 megahertz, um obs was freezing and it, ever since i updated the bios it, it so my computer wasn't freezing and crashing but obs would like freeze for a few seconds and it just it was kind of annoying um so what i ended up doing is i just close rather than having three different brow and this so rather than having three different browsers up because this is why i'm into the productivity and creative stuff i run dude i have a lot of different youtube channels okay so that's why i care about the productivity stuff yes i use microsoft edge i use google chrome and then i use mozilla firefox and i have one browser over here a browser over here and a browser over there uploading a video to this one editing the description and titles and thumbnails on this one and then this one over here is starting to upload and then i'll swap this one over here and i'll start like so like i'm kind of like always like rotating out the what i'm doing on my computer and while i was like recording with obs and having these browsers open you can kind of understand why I need 64 gigabytes of DDR5 in my computer in the first place. However, the reason I'm saying this, my camera's about to overheat, so I'm going to go ahead and end it. I've been recording for almost 20 minutes anyway. Um, the reason I'm saying this is because before the new BIOS update, my OBS was freezing as I was recording. So all I did is I kept two browsers open rather than three browsers open, and boom, back to normal. 
so the crash is stopped um and but now with the most recent bios update i'm able to have all these browsers open my photo editor open my video editor open obs open and whatever uh literally the video file of this computer so that i can remember what i'm talking about um <laughs> So, so you kind of see my point here, man. So yeah, overall recommend everything. If you're into productivity, I genuinely recommend the Ultra 9 over the, the Ryzen 9. If you're into gaming and you're looking for the best like all around computer, I recommend the Ryzen 7 9800 X3D if you can even get your hands on that or the 7800 X3D because unlike Intel, you're able to like use like all kinds of different CPUs with the, with the current platform.